what sort of situation do you comes to your mind when you think of breaking resiliency? Sorry. Time in the sense that's something that which is being repeated over a very long period of time. Okay, so something that you have to endure, something difficult that goes on for a long time. Trauma. Trauma. <laughs> Any ideas of what kind of trauma? Maybe an accident. Violence. Violence. Not knowing. Not knowing. Just for not knowing. Okay, so dealing with the unknown. Okay. Death. Death. Normal life pressures just become too much when there's illness. Yes. Okay. So when your body isn't functioning like you were saying, what it is. Lack Great. of support. Lack of support. Great. Okay. So you're saying like difficult circumstances um, and you mentioned trauma. So now I'd like to ask you, how do you define trauma? What comes to your mind? When something unexpected, well, when something unexpected, which is negative, happens to you. Yes. So okay. it's like it shocks your Shock. being. Good. Unexpected. What else? To continue on what uh, Darlinka said, um, something which I would rocks the foundation. Sort of when you feel like the floor underneath your feet has been shakes your ground. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. What else? Something where you think you don't have the ability to, to overcome the situation. You don't have the ability to cope. So it's something unexpected, something that shocks you. You feel you can't cope with it. And I want to go back to what you said. You mm -hmm. said about um, continuous. Continuous. And in fact, you're mentioning all the things that define trauma. Um, and about two weeks ago, Lydia said that trauma is full contact without preparation. When you think about the contact cycle, if it's full contact without preparation, um, how do you think that affects you? What would happen to you if you have full contact and no preparation for it? It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. You break. You break. Okay. It's the other way around. You get stuck in the ears. Okay, that's interesting. What do you mean? All the emotions, <coughs> sensations, and not being able to move it like sometimes. Okay. So okay. So you could end up freezing, yes. and it all gets stuck. Just okay. Okay. What about the end of the cycle? If you're hit fast and full contact without preparation, what happens to the end of the contact cycle? Because they're stuck in it. You can see. So what happens there? There's no withdrawal, no satisfaction. Yeah, it's unfinished. unfinished business, right? Good. I'd like you now to take your hand like this, and we're going to pretend that this is a brain laid out flat. Okay, I'm referring to um, the tree and brain. Daniel Siegel uses this a lot, the guy who wrote The Developing Mind, amongst a bunch of other things. You see the three parts of the brain there? There's the green, the red, and the blue. So the green is this part of the brain, okay? It's our survival stem, our brain stem. It connects to our spine um, and is responsible for keeping us alive and sending us signals that we're in danger. Now take your thumb and put it across your hand. This is the limbic system. It's responsible for our emotions, okay? Feelings of hate, jealousy, sadness, anger, okay? Now this, our fingers are gonna act as our cortex. The cortex is the last part of the human brain to develop. In fact, it develops after we're born. The other two parts develop within the womb. Now, if you notice, your fingers connect to the other two parts of your brain. The cortex is what makes us human. The cortex is the part of the brain that takes the information from the survival stem, takes information from the limbic system, and takes information from outside and integrates it. Okay, it's what makes sense of it. And this, because we have a cortex, it's what allows us to think and say, okay, I'm going to act this way instead of this way. Now, during a moment of trauma, what happens is that, remember this full contact, no preparation, okay? Our survival stem and our limbic system become so overwhelmed and overactive that our cortex shuts off. So exactly in that moment when you need to react, you can't. You can't think of a way to react. At the same time, 
our bodies release adrenaline and cortisol. So our heart rate speeds up, our breathing rate speeds up, our muscles tense up, our tummies don't work. Okay? <coughs> and because our cortex has shut off, we cannot integrate the experience. We go back to unfinished business. What happens when we have unfinished business? We keep on repeating the cycle until we you keep actually finish it. Exactly. We keep trying to repeat, we keep trying to complete the cycle. And what's happening is, this is happening on a psychological level and on a physiological level, okay? In that moment of freezing, in that moment of trauma, um, our emotions are cut off unconsciously, we can't register them. So it all just gets stuck in the body. It gets stuck on a cellular level. Our body remembers the trauma. So what happens is we end up <coughs> with symptoms. Can go back one? Thank you. So we end up with symptoms like nightmares. <coughs> like pain in the body, a lot of trauma um, su survivors have um, experienced a lot of pain. <clears throat> we end up with intrusive thoughts, okay? Or we end up with um, symptoms like coping, coping mechanisms, like cutting ourselves or throwing up food. And all of these symptoms keep telling our brains that we're still in danger. So it's very, very difficult <coughs> to understand that you are no longer in danger. But what do you imagine your life would be like if you constantly felt like you were in danger? Horrible. Horrible. Anxious. Very jumpy. Anxious, jumpy. What else? How, what would your day be like at work? Hypervigilant. Hypervigilant. With your, with your family members. Chaotic. Chaotic. Don't feel like it's much. Overwhelming. Yes. Would you be present? No. No. Okay. The impact of trauma, it triggers, has a butterfly effect. Do you remember that movie? Yes. Mm -hmm. It has a butterfly effect. So, um, it affects our emotional responses, our behavioral responses, our thought processes. It affects our bodies. Okay? And we carry it with us. And then it also forms, it gives us a sense of identity. This was something that Jackie and I kept going over when we were speaking about resilience. It was like everybody kept saying, oh, if you survive, you're resilient. You know, kids of schizophrenic mothers are resilient. They survive, they have jobs, they get married. Does that mean resilient? It's like, okay, creative adjustment, yes, it makes us survive, but are they living fulfilled lives? Are they stuck in repeating the cycle? So how do we help our traumatized clients to become resilient? to stretch their coping mechanisms. <clears throat> so Gestalt therapy is concerned with making things whole. Um, the word Gestalt comes from an old English word for healing. We like to complete cycles. So I want you to think of the brain again, okay? So to complete the cycle, we need to integrate the experience. The cortex shut off. So we need to help the client to integrate it again. Now, the hippocampus, that part in red over there, that part is responsible for the fear response. That part of the brain can make new brain cells and form new neural pathways in adult life under one condition. The stress must be significantly reduced. Now remember that our traumatized clients are stuck in a, a state of, of danger, right? So how do we reduce stress for our clients? What are your ideas? I think that one of them is finding a safe space for them. Safe space? Yes. Good. Building trusting alliance. Trusting alliance. Great. So we developed the therapeutic relationship. That's okay. Great. We don't jump into dealing with the traumatic situation. It's too much. We don't want to take away their creative adjustment and say, this isn't good enough. I'm going to give you something else. It's what they have. So we go slowly, and we develop the trust. And what's beautiful is that this neurological development cannot happen without IDAO. It can't happen without relationship. So through therapy, we are creating these neural pathways. We are healing from the inside. Out. So we focus on the relationship, we help 
the client to develop their self-care skills, and we act as the replacement cortex. So we, we do the containing when they can't do it. We help them to calm down when they can't do it, okay? So the second thing we do is we undo and we redo and we allow the client to mourn. And we do this slowly as well. We go in, we go out, we go in, we go out. Like Lydia was saying, this pendulum, okay? <coughs> so, for example, in one therapy session, we'll look at an introject that's affecting them or a couple of introjects, and we'll just work with that. And then in another one, we'll work with um, a polarity. And then in another one, we'll look at the way that they um, modify their contact. Okay? And slowly, slowly, we start to develop these neural pathways. They disconnect certain things, certain associations that they've made from the traumatic experience. So, as opposed to before, where, um, you know, <clears throat> one man was sexually abusive with me becomes all men are bad. It becomes, <laughs> okay, that man was sexually abusive with me. <laughs> and I can experiment, I can see which ones are safe, I can see which ones are not, okay? And it takes time. So this is something that we need to remember. Therapy, and this was a lesson I needed to learn, therapy is not a magic wand, okay? So it takes repetition, it takes time, and this integration needs practice, and so we go, we practice it in the therapy setting, we go out into the world, we go back, we integrate it in and out. It's slow. You know how in Gestalt we have the first two years that is like dealing with all of our unfinished business? It takes time. It takes two years because it takes time. Because there's a difference between understanding resilience cognitively and understanding it, not understanding it, embodying it, feeling it. Yeah? Okay. And we know our clients are doing well when they start to embody resilience. <coughs> so when we speak about resilience, we don't think about it just being survival. We speak about it being choiceful. So I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. And as Lydia said, whatever happens to me, I will make something good out of it. Oh, well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>